Hi, we're coming to you live from Sync Summit here in West Hollywood at the SLS Hotel. And we managed to catch up with the man himself, Mark Freezer, who is the founder and director of Sync Summit. Mark, thank you so much for doing this. I Hello, really appreciate Liz, it. Thank you so much for being part of this and uh, bringing uh, Ubu TV to uh, our event. Really How is the conference going for you? Well, the conference, you know, the way I look at these things is if it's going well for the people who are attending, it's going well for me. So I would say I qualified well. <laughs> okay. Because it looks to me like people are having a productive, good time, that there's a lot of good networking, that the people who are um, on stage are sharing, you know, good information, good thoughts, good stories, etc. And uh, in general, I think people are uh, getting uh, what I would like them to get out of it, which is, uh, you know, good connections uh, and uh, good information. Okay. You know, you have an interesting background. You, you come from a sales and marketing in the tech world. You're very knowledgeable in that. And I'm curious, mm -hmm. how did that transition into doing this particular conference? What was the, the inspiration for Sync Summit specifically? Because it's a very specific area. Okay, well, I'll, I'll give you a very short synopsis of my background. I mean, I, music, music has always been one of my greatest passions in life. I mean, I, I sing, I had a band. When I was 17, my first real job that wasn't a paper route or something like that was uh, writing for a uh, magazine in New York uh, as a uh, music journalist. And, uh, you know, it's just always been central to me. The tech side of things was just always something that was there probably from, you know, I would say 20-something years. And, uh, you know, I've been involved in a lot of interesting things during the dot-com era and during the mobile era. I did a lot of uh, things in technology. Uh, before I started this event, uh, I worked for a uh, VC that's based in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Probably a great thing that I'm not in Jerusalem now, but it was a wonderful experience um, and uh, you know, it was very tech heavy. So when I got out of that, you know, Rich, I was like, okay, I want to do something that's purely music after working with Israeli people for two years who were very intense. And I thought, okay, I'm going to you know, do something that I would purely love and also where I could do something with sort of my knowledge of technology. And the idea was to create something in the licensing, and I'll get to the summit in a minute, but create something in the licensing world where, you know, we could, um, you know, sort of bridge the gap between the people who use music and visual media and uh, the people that make and own it. And that was the original idea, is to create a uh, licensing company and maybe build a technology for some, uh, you know, to help uh, to uh, sift through the music. And while we were doing that, I thought, okay, you know what, I want to build an event because I really want to bring the whole industry together. I want to create an information infrastructure that I didn't see existing. That was very self-serving, to be honest. I mean, the reason that I did it. I went to events like uh, Billboard TV and Film. I went to, uh, you know, a variety of other events. And, you know, I found that they were good, that they gave me good information, but they didn't give me exactly what I wanted. And which meant, you know, as somebody who wanted to do business uh, between uh, the, the creators of visual and the creators of music, um, a way to connect with people, to learn, and to do deals. So, you know, that's, that's what Sing Summit was all about. And I'm sorry about it being so long. Oh, but, not at all. you know, at the end of the day, Sing Summit was built so that we could bring together all of the actors in the industry to have a good conversation, to get to know each other, to do business, learn about new business models, meet sponsors and other companies that can help them to do business, and also have some fun. Have some fun. Because this is the music industry, and we shouldn't just be all about talking about business models and data. I mean, I can sit and talk about all of that all day. But at the end of the day, we have to remember the reason that we're here is because of the music. You know, and that's why, you know, when we do this event, we try to integrate performances into both day and night. And, um, you know, look, at, at the end of the day, uh, the, that's the genesis for the event. And, uh, you know, as we've built it over time, we've just tried to keep it focused on, you know, what it is, not only that the people who are coming in who are creators or who are um, uh, owners of music want, but also the people who are music supervisors, the people that head up music at film and TV studios. You know, a lot of these conferences, and I'm talking too much again, no, but, not at all. okay, but a lot of these conferences 
they tend to focus on what the people that buy the tickets want. And you know, you have to do that because it is a business. But one of the things that I think differentiates what we do to some degree is that we also focus on what the people who are on stage want. Because, you know, a music supervisor, they want to, they, 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 you know, it's like they don't just want to be used, you know, to be thrown on stage or something. Right. They have their passions, they have their desires, they have their stories to tell about the industry. So we really try to, like, get a sense of what it is that makes them happy to be a part of the event. So hopefully that helps us to differentiate it, and it helps them actually to open up a little bit when they're here. Right, and to participate. Exactly. You know, you've been at this for a couple of years, and I'm curious, in, in doing something like this, what have, been, what have been the greatest challenges you've had to overcome? Oh, well, I mean, there's a couple of things. The first thing in, in developing an event like this is programming. Programming, programming, programming. What I mean by that is I mean, you know, what is the agenda going to be? Who are the people that we're going to invite to get up on stage and why? That's extremely important because I believe that if you build a good program, that if you bring the right people together onto the stage, you're going to get people's interest. So that's really always the biggest challenge, you know? And that goes beyond, you know, it's like you can say, well, you know, the first couple of years you do a conference, you know, you're not going to expect to make a huge amount of money, right? You're not. I mean, it's just the business model. You can't think about that. What you have to think about is uh, how are you going to build the best program possible? How are you going to make it so that when people come to a conference, they go, you know, I really got something out of that. It was really time well spent. Because right. a lot of conferences, I mean, I walk away from them and I think to myself, what did I just do? I just lost a week, you know, and, and I don't want people to have that feeling when they come here. So programming is one of the biggest challenges. Okay. Uh, one of the other challenges is just to make sure that, you know, what we do stays relevant and we don't say the same things over and over again. You know, it's like there's a lot of things that bear repeating every single conference, like, you know, you should have tight turnarounds when you're dealing with TV, when you're trying to compose music for it. You should have, you know, one stops, which basically means that, uh, you know, all of your rights are accounted for and you have all the paperwork for them for each song. Those things are great, but you also have to talk about the reason that people have gotten into it in the first place, the creative. You know, like when you see a music supervisor talk about a project that they love, their eyes light up like a kid. That's the reason that they got into it. You know, you talk to somebody like Gary Calamar, who I hope you talk to later. We did. We okay, you already talked to him. Okay. Yeah. But you talk to somebody like Gary Calamar, I mean, Gary is like a jack of all trades of music. You know, he plays music. He just had an album come out. Right. He uh, spins at uh, KCRW. You know, he's written about music in a book. And he's music supervisor for some of the major TV shows in the world. So. You know, this is a guy who, he knows the business of music, but his passion is all about the music, you know? And we can't lose sight of that when, in anything that we do. I think that's a challenge, too. And then, outside of that, is the usual growing pains in starting a business. You know, I mean, right. I could get into what those right. are, but it's just, you know, <laughs> having, going from a point where you're starting something, you're trying to make it something, to the watershed point where it sort of crosses over, and now it's become something, and now it's sort of like you have to manage the development of it. So that's another challenge. But overall, I think we're doing okay. You know, one of the interesting things about Sync Summit that I want to ask you about, because I'm very curious, you started Sync Summit in New York. Yeah. And you brought it here, okay, to California, yeah. which is logical. But then you took it to Europe. And that's an unusual kind of, of background. Now, I know on a personal level, you have a connection with Paris and that you were educated there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've got, was that the reason you took it to Paris, or were there other broader business implications as to why you took Sing Summit to Paris? Totally. Okay. Here's the, here's the thing. All it's, right. You know, there is a bit of the personal in it. I mean, it, ha it, it definitely helps that I can speak French. Right. You know, so I, I, I'm very comfortable in the society. Right. But, you know, basically the idea for me was that Sync, licensing, placement, and music in general is an international business with some localization of content, but it is an international business. And if you are doing business in New York in sync, it's usually advertising with a smidge of television and film and video games, you know, rock star and a couple of productions, you know, but basically it's advertising. Here it's film and television with, you know, decent amount of video games and some advertising. So you got, if you're in the U.S., you've got to have something in both markets. Now, for me, um, doing something in the European market was really sort of like, am I going to do Paris? Am I going to do London? And we went for Paris because we wanted to do something that was truly European. And the reason that we wanted to do this is because it's a big marketplace. 
It's a huge market. It's a different market with a lot of rules that you know don't apply here. Uh, and a lot of rules that apply here but don't apply there that are worth getting to know if you're in this business, like you know, television sinks or blanket licenses, which means you don't have to pay for them. Um, but um, you know, at the end of the day, it's a very big marketplace for advertising, for film, for television even, and certainly for video games. And I thought that it was important that we did something uh, in the European marketplace to bring together the best people here in the United States along with the people who were doing the business day to day in the European market, you know? And, and we really, you know, we really did our homework and uh, did a lot of lobbying. We got people from Sweden, from Holland, from France, of course, uh, the UK, um, Italy, Germany, all people who work at big production companies heading up music, like Constantine Film, which is a huge German uh, music uh, studio. I mean, I mean, film studio. Excuse me, like Gaumont, which is a huge French film studio, uh, B Sky B, BBC. All of these people, basically, they they work in our world, but most people don't interact with them. Right. You know, and that's really what I wanted to sort of get over. So at the end of the day, you know, it's not just bringing, doing an airlift of Americans into Europe because certainly the Europeans want to see them, but it's also about, you know giving those people access to the European people who are making and owning music as well as the people who are at the film studios, the ad firms, etc. so that they can really sort of like cross-pollinate, learn, and do more business together. And I thought that that would be something that would be really cool to create a truly European conference. And, uh, you know, I think it went pretty well. It was uh, something that, uh, you know, certainly had some challenges because, you know, no matter how familiar you are with the foreign market, you're bringing a lot of people over. And, you know, uh, you sort of have to sort of take care of them and shepherd them and make sure that they're feeling uh, good about uh, the event. But it's a long trip. Yeah, yeah and overall, we had, we had a great group of people. We had people like Mary Ramos. We had uh, Nora Felder come. We had... Um, whole bunch of other people I'm forgetting right now because it's been a long day. <laughs> a lot of music supervisors. A lot of music supervisors we brought over. Let me ask you, I mean, based on what you just said, I mean, you, you brought up an interesting point about the that they only not, not only want to meet, you know, all the supervisors here, but that the supervisors here want connections and in uh, side into the European market. As as a result of that, Mark, are you going to be taking the conference over there again? Are you going to be furthering the market in in Europe? Are you planning to yeah. do one in London or in Paris again? Or well, the thing is, we're we're looking at doing one in London, but I think that I'm going to swing back towards Paris for next year again, okay. uh, just because. Yeah, people from London never need an excuse to come to Paris. It's one thing I'll tell you. They have no problem taking the channel over. And they will, yeah. And they will. And, and my fear is, even though I love England, yeah. you do it in London and then it's considered a... I, I, I hate using this term, it's so French. Anglo-Saxon. It's considered like Anglo not... not it's, European. it's an Anglo event versus a European event. It's like a US-UK event versus something that brings the whole market together. Now, with that said, there's a heck of a lot of business that goes on in the UK by itself. So we may a huge do a smaller there. event. Yeah, yeah. We may do a smaller event there, but for the main event, I think we're going to keep the European event in Paris for the moment. Okay. But it's, a, it, it's very important to us because, you know, it's like, look, I won't get too much into it, but you know, sync isn't the only thing I do. I would do a lot of work with electronic musicians who are very prominent in the French market. You know, people who are you know not Daft Punk, but in the same level as Daft Punk in the European market. And you know, these people I work with, you know, in terms of uh, syncs, in terms of management, and a variety of different levels. So I have a passion for the music that's over there, mm -hmm. and uh, getting that music into the ears of people and into productions is something that I think is you know got some personal importance into to me, but also allowing the people that I know in the U.S., but also in Europe, to discover this kind of music is a twofold thing. Number one, they can find really good music that will probably cost them less than some of the other really good music that they want. And number two, there's just sort of the passion of turning people on to new music. Right. You know. Exactly. So, yeah, there, uh, the long and the short of it is that Europe is very important to us. And it's interesting because I think, you know, a lot of people who license music not who license music, but who want to get their music licensed into film and TV, 
do not think outside the United States. And I think what you're doing there is so important because Thank you. you know you got to be able to know who the you know the French advertisers are and who the European people are. I'm always telling people that with music, with yeah. songs. Yeah. You know, don't only think in the United States. There's a whole roster of people in Warner Brothers UK and in your Warner's France, and you know, think globally today. Yeah. You know, so I mean, that's what I think doing this does is that for both parties, like you were saying. It acts as a conduit for yes, they can meet the Schnorrs and the Felders of the world and the, yeah. and the Calamars, but at the same time, they can now expand their universe yeah. to French composers, German composers, Swedish TV, exactly. Uh, you know all the things you were talking about. You're so you're so right. And the thing is, like you know, Nora's a buddy of mine, and her and I, you know, we speak about. She's like, you know, I met so many cool musicians, so many cool acts, and I got turned on to cool, great new music when I was over there. Mm -hmm. You know, and some of it, you know she may actually end up using, right. you know, and that's worth the trip. I mean, okay, it's a trip to Paris, it's not that bad, but it's still, it's worth the time and the effort that she took to actually have some new stuff that she can put into productions. It just helps her and it helps everybody else do their job. And, you know, the other, the other thing is, it's, it's really good for them as well to meet, you know, some of the uh, people that are music supervisors in that market, you sure. know, like, you know, uh, one that comes to mind uh, that I think is a great guy is uh, Nis uh, Borland, who is um, he does he does a lot a lot of work on television in, in Europe in Sweden I think right uh, no in Denmark. Denmark but also everywhere yes. I mean yeah. he does it everywhere and uh, he did the original Killing yes the Killing show which came here to America as the Killing which was brilliant but he did the original one in in, in, uh, in Denmark yeah exactly yeah. and he also does tons of brand work. Yes, he does. You know? And he's just one example of the people that, you know, if you scratch the surface a little bit and look at Europe, you can get to know, you know, okay, I'm talking about supervisors getting to know supervisors, and that's nice. But, you know, if you're somebody who's a composer, if you're somebody who's an artist, you need to if you're somebody who's a rights owner, you need to get yourself over to Europe and see what's going on because there's money there. Yeah. You know? Well, precisely. Yeah. On that note, tell me what is the future for Sync Summit? What have you got in, in, in mind for the next couple of years? Oh, it's a good question. I mean, I don't like to say more of the same. I mean, it's like we want to keep it vital. Certainly, we're going to keep our New York and uh, we're going to keep our New York and LA events going. We're going to keep Paris going. I've been toying with the idea of doing something in uh, Asia, but um, you know, that's a, that's a leap that we will only take with a partner. But also, speaking of partners, we've been working with uh, partners in uh, South America. We've partnered on doing an event in. Um, in uh, in Brazil that's taking place in two weeks, uh, where we've programmed the sync schedule. So we're doing some things like that. But in addition to that, in the world of sync summit, one of the other things that we're trying to do is just get people to discover more music through you know some of the music that we discover from an organic level. That's number one. Number two, get market research and data out, which means you know at the end of the day. Um, you know, we've put together our own market research reports basically because, you know, I felt as somebody who was a writer, you know, I, I wanted to get some data out there. So we put together stories of the marketplace, stuff like that. But, you know, we're also, we've also just uh, put together a uh, deal with um, Shazam to uh, put together a white paper with them about how Shazam leads to better discovery and revenue for artists and how it's all tied to sync. And we're also going to do a quantification of the uh, marketplace with them. We're going to do a uh, sync chart of the Wonderful. type. Wow. So, you know, these are the sorts of things that we have coming up. Is you know, Really, the whole idea is to bring people together and give them the resources to do well in this business. That's what it comes down to. And that's what you're doing on a global level. Yeah. Which is very, very exciting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much You're for doing welcome. this. Thanks, I really appreciate it. it. It's my pleasure.